Voters in the vacant single seat ward of Hogang will go to the polls on May 26 if there's a contest on nomination day on May 16. President Tony Tan Keng Yam issued the writ of election for the constituency today. And you are looking at it right now. The seat was vacated in February by the former Workers' Party MP Yao Shin Leong. The Elections Department says Serangoon Junior College will be the nomination centre. The returning officer is the Chief Executive Director of the People's Association, Yam Ami. Election deposit for candidates has been set at $13,500, the same amount as the last general election. Now that a writ has been issued for a by-election in Hogang, what can we expect? Our reporter explains the lead-up to polling day. Based on the register of electors, there are about 24,000 voters in Hogang, a single-member seat located in the northeastern part of Singapore. The last general election was held in May 2011, three months after the Electoral Boundaries Review Committee report was released. So what happens now that the president has issued the writ of elections? Well, the returning officer will issue a notice stipulating the date, time and place for nomination of candidates. The nomination paper has to be signed by the candidate, proposer, seconder and at least four assenters. These names must appear on the register of electors for the constituency that the candidate is standing in. The candidate must also pay an election deposit amounting to about 8% of the total allowance payable to MPs. Now once that is sorted out, all eyes will be on nomination day. This has to take place at least four days and no more than one month after the writ is issued. Here's what will happen on nomination day. Candidates must present their nomination papers and certificates to the returning officer at the nomination centre between 11 a.m. and noon. Nomination closes at noon. If there is no contest, a walkover will be announced. There is an objection time during which candidates can object to any nomination. Now, this is done between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Objections could be on the grounds of the unsuitability of candidates or nomination papers not filed properly. Objection results, if any, will be announced by 1 p.m. Campaigning starts immediately after nomination closes, and it can run from just nine days to eight weeks. Campaigning could be in the form of house-to-house -house visits or rallies by the candidates. As with the 2011 general election, internet election advertising is allowed. This means candidates can leverage on new media tools to engage voters and spread their message. There will also be a one-day cooling-off day before polling. That's when no campaigning is allowed. Introduced in April 2010, Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong had said the day will give voters time to reflect rationally on issues after the emotional high of election campaigning. Now, polling day takes place at least 10 days or at most 8 weeks after nomination day. And perhaps the question on the minds of many Singaporeans is, will there be a public holiday for the by-election? Well, the Parliamentary Elections Act says no, but employers must allow voters in Hogang time off to vote. The Hogang by-election is shaping up to be a straight fight between the People's Action Party and the Workers' Party. Three opposition parties, National Party, Party, Singapore Democratic Party and the Singapore People's Party have said that they will not contest the by-election. Mr Desmond Chu, who was the PAP candidate for Hogang during the general election last year, could be contesting this by election. Mr Chu currently serves as an advisor to the Hogang grassroots organisations after losing the election to the Workers' Party's Yao Shin Leung last year. But a year on, Mr Chu told reporters he felt a change in how residents regard him. That's because when I uh, participated in G11, I only had about uh, three months with them. Uh, now I have an additional year with them, uh, spend a lot more time being uh, close, um, talking, making sure that um, we have a lot more interaction time. So definitely you see that residents are a lot warmer, um, they are more ready to talk to you about issues that matter to them. He said it is up to the Prime Minister to decide who will contest in Hogang, but added that he's ready. This evening, Workers' Party's Chen Shou Ma was at a Meet the People session in Hogang Avenue 5. Mr Chen, who is an MP for Aljunit GRC, said he was there to facilitate the weekly MPS in the single-seat ward. He declined to make any comments about the Hogang by-election, saying that the MPS was not the platform to do so. He said the party leadership will make the relevant statements in due course. In his first comments on the by-election, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong says it should not distract the country from focusing on national priorities and building an inclusive Singapore. Here's him at Melda Saad. Well, 
in his Facebook post, Mr. Lee said that over the past year, the government has worked hard with Singaporeans to implement programs to build an inclusive Singapore. He said much work remains ahead to translate the policies into action. On the by-election... Lee said Mr. Yao himself has said nothing and that both the Workers' Party and Mr. Yao have let voters down. Certificates of entitlement premiums for vehicles closed mix in the latest round of bidding today. Earlier this month, Transport Minister Lui Tuck Yu had signalled that plans to cut the growth rate of vehicles may be delayed amid concerns over surging COE premiums caused by a supply crunch. Premiums in the large cars category saw the largest increase of some $1,000 to over 92000 The goods vehicles and buses category closed higher at 858500 but the small cars category closed lower at 62600 The open category, which is mostly used for big cars, also went down to just under 89000 I think uh, the government uh, announcement on uh, a consideration for a reallocation is uh, very pertinent at this point in time. So uh, people are more cautious. People have to be. Uh, people have to wait to see what really happens. Foreign experts have raised concerns in the way last December's train dis disruptions were managed. Among them, the lack of customer care and confusion of roles by SMRT staff. Two experts gave a total of 10 recommendations to the Committee of Inquiry today. Andrew Barr from the London Underground said the recommendations are fairly common sense and not rocket science. Mr Barr and Peter Gillens from Australia said that SMRT must have a simplified okay, system which easily allows staff to know specific roles yep. and responsibilities. They felt SMRT also fell short in caring for commuters, especially those stuck in stalled trains. Mr Barr shared how in London, nearby retail outlets are roped in to to make sure there are bottled water for commuters. The experts also suggested ferrying affected commuters to stations where trains are still operating on other lines. Well, the two experts also stressed the need to be honest and to give clear information to commuters in the event of a disruption. For example, if there are no bus bridging services as yet, this should be told to commuters so that they can make an informed decision on what to do next. Overall, the experts feel that given the resources, SMRT did all they could during the disruptions.